solar job, bringing down 51 panels of power. Here's our outdoor wiring trough that we're building. Um, got the generator hooked up. Just got to grab a battery tomorrow. Test that, make sure that that's good. And then on this back side, we ended up bringing the three runs. Uh, and then we're going to land those today. So we're doing this a little bit different. We're bringing our home runs down before we set the panels. Which are these Q-Cell 335s. Before we uh, set the panels up there, we're getting our home runs all wired and landed. So they will be, when we hook up our panels, they'll be hot. and But they'll be landed in a disconnect. So no junctions on the roof. So we just pulled home runs straight down through landed them in the disco so then we can we have a just a little little different than we normally do a little safer I think and just takes building the system up front which is just fine on this beautiful day all right got our mini rails in their appropriate location we're doing this job a little differently we've we're building all of the infrastructure first before we put any modules on Home runs completed, and then we're gonna go ahead and land these in the disconnects. So when we make our final connections up here, that'll be hot. Just doing a little wire pulling right now. Is it working? This is our new Diablo setup. Oh, rip your rip your arm off. We're chewing, looking for wires. It's chewing like butter. What I like is you didn't drop the hole saw down on the wall because this coupling system is awesome. Did you chew up the wires, boss? I hope not. Though we prefer to put solar on the ground, sometimes we just have to put it on a roof, and, and this job is that case. Um, there are six disconnects. I know there's a rule about four, more, no more than four per system, but this is two systems. I'm calling it two inverters. So we have a lot of panels, um, 16 plus 17 kW of solar coming down. And then we have rapid shutdown units on the um, panels. So we're using Tygo uh, rapid shutdown units. You're going to see them. Let me just get you a picture of that on the panel. Turns your panel into an octopus. You got wires everywhere. But this is a TSA4 Tygo. They just clip on the panel and then they're strung together. So the latest. NEC 2017 requires, which is being enforced here, requires that each panel hit a less than 30 volts in 30 seconds, I think. So when this button is hit, that is the rapid shutdown button that is tied into this. Each Solark will have its own switch, and um, all the PV passes through a coil. I'll show you that. We're going to mount them on the inside on a DIN rail. And uh, so when you get to the point where you have the fire department shows up, again, there's going to be a meter base here. Everything's going to be on this wall. And so it's all within line of sight of that meter base. You got to turn the power off. You turn, you hit that solar array and boom, rapid shutdown. Okay. So we'll show you the other, the train, there's a, so there's a receiver on each panel and then there's a transmitter and then there's a 12 volt power supply that comes out of the solar terminal block. It's powered off the batteries and that provides the power for the coil I believe and anyway and then the PV the solar that will pass through into the inside through here we haven't run that yet we've just run the the solar panel side of these disconnects we'll show you that part okay that's what these emergency stops are all about rapid shutdown compliance 2017 for a string inverter a little more difficult when we do an inverter like this versus an end phase or solar edge, which rapid shutdown is kind of inherent to them, but it's not on a battery based Solark. All right, I'm going to shoot an end of the week video here. Didn't do a lot of video, and we were just getting it, Abraham and I. 
the only ones working on this job because of coronavirus, but we were thankful to have a job close. So what we're, this is the first time we're um, stacking two Solark 12Ks together. And uh, a couple other things I want to tell you about the system. We are doing rapid shutdown. And we mounted the transmitters there on their DIN rail. And they, you see the, we took all the positives for the strings on the roof through the uh, CT that energizes the circuit to shut down the Tygo 4s that are on the back. I think I showed you that. Tygo 4 rapid shutdown unit on the back. Oh, there's my snacks behind the panel. Gotta have my snacks. And my template. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the template. Made me t I don't know. I think I told you about this template. But this has been a... This is great. So you see all the conduits we have to put up on here. And so we use SketchUp. I think I showed you this. We use SketchUp just to model the uh, pattern on the bottom. And I had a buddy that has a laser bed and uh, we sent him a DXF file out of SketchUp and he knocked all these out. So we're able to just take this and set it on our wiring troughs and obviously this is upside down. Let's set it up against the wall. This is just a clearance for the switch. Trace lays out, the batteries, solar coming in, controls, and the AC side of the inverter. So then we pop all those holes and you're left with a nice neat setup there. So instead of every time taking a piece of cardboard and marking it out, what a pain. So I gave one to Johnny Boy and one for me. So wherever we go, we got our templates. Thankfully, when they did the 12 k it's the same frame as the 8K. They just changed the internal workings and they put external breakers. Woo, thankful for those. So what do we got here? We've got our solar is landed, but we haven't put our solar on the roof yet. Solar's landed in here. We've got about 17 kW between the two inverters, plenty of power. And in the wiring trough, we've got our PDBs, power distribution blocks, thanks to Johnny. He found those, and those are great. What are we doing with those? We brought the generator in, which is a 20K, and we're splitting it between the Solarks. We brought the generator into the third breaker here, same on this one. So we're splitting it because each Solark has like a 10 kW onboard charger so we're gonna use take advantage of that with the uh, with the generator so um, this panel I got to finish wiring this is the critical loads panel let's go to the first breaker here and so these are combiner panels so we're taking both Solarks bringing their outputs combining them here for critical loads and same with the grid side we're combining the grid in here and coming off of that so the critical loads will actually run to the bottom of this transfer switch. I don't know if you can see that. So when I'm, I'm actually up. When I'm up, I'm running on Solarks. And when I'm down, I'm running on grid only. So it's our bypass. It's a 200 amp GE manual transfer switch, bypass, safety switch. And then we took service entrance cable, ran it up above where the ceiling's gonna go and brought it down in. This is the main panel that we're powering. Okay, it hasn't been wired yet. The house hasn't been built yet. We're just building all this in a pole barn. Still left to go. We have our insulated piercing connectors. And we'll be uh, doing that tomorrow, Elijah and I. Um, so that's the inside. And let me show you the outside. On the outside, we finished up the uh, generator install today, ran that, anchored it down, and we uh, trenched over and brought the generator power up into the gutter. So Try to keep all the AC on this side and the DC on that side. But with an inverter that has everything all in one, it's hard to separate it out. 200 amp fusible disconnect. GE, pop the fuses in there. All right. And we have this 200 amp panel. Well, I'm not gonna take it all apart right now and that's being fed by the meter so there's no power here but we set this thing up for grid power for the future and the power company can just run their line in meter base and that's it so generator's ready to go so tomorrow i'm going to try to fire up the generator using the two using the uh, gen start function of the Solark, and we're so we can use the two wire start capability of the cummins generator and we can fire it up based on battery state of charge 
And because a lot of people don't have a lot of good solar, they're in the middle of the woods, but they have a generator and they still want batteries and they want an inverter. So we like the Cummins because of the two wire start capability. I know most generators are, some are not. I think Generac's difficult there. So that's it. We got a two wire start generator putting out 20 kW, two Solarks taking advantage of that to charge the battery. We will have 17 kW solar on here, and that's why there's so many disconnects three for each inverter two rapid shutdown buttons um, for all those rapid shutdown Tygo 4s, fusible disconnect, 200 amp main service, so it's protected, it's 200 amp breaker, and that's it. All right, it's time to go home. It's Friday evening, Friday afternoon. It's time to get out of this mode and go, go home. All right, I know that's a long video, but I hope Maybe that's helpful for you, and uh, if you're ever wanting to build your own system, let me know.